Welcome to the learning program IO1 High Voltage Battery Unit. Please observe the following general information. The IO1 has a variety of high voltage components which are operated with high voltage. Only service employees who satisfy all the prerequisites are permitted to work on the designated high voltage components. Suitable qualifications, compliance with the safety rules, procedure following the repair instructions must be adhered to at all times. When working at or near high voltage components, the vehicle must be put into a service disconnect condition beforehand by suitably qualified personnel. If certain prerequisites are met, this tutorial will qualify you to work on the high voltage battery unit of the IO-1. The prerequisites for this are a valid certification high voltage battery unit of the third or fourth generation or of a BMW i8 and passing the learning objectives check at the end of this tutorial. If any of these prerequisites are not satisfied, this tutorial alone does not qualify you to work on the IO-1 high voltage battery unit. In this case, the battery certification is carried out via a face-to-face -face training. In this learning program, you receive information on the structure of the high voltage battery unit as well as general operations for repair. In the IO-1, for the first time, it is possible that in the service workshop, the high voltage battery unit no longer has to be completely replaced in the event of a fault. Instead, components in the high voltage battery unit can also be replaced and repaired. Where do you think the high voltage battery unit is located in the IO-1? Using the mouse, click on the correct area. Correct. The high voltage battery unit is located in the drive module in the center of the vehicle. With the installation location, the IO-1 obtains a low vehicle center of gravity. This way, the roll tendency in bends is reduced. The passenger compartment is also not restricted. A completely new passenger compartment concept without a transmission tunnel can therefore be implemented. Another advantage is the good accessibility in service whereby the repair costs are reduced. The high voltage battery unit consists of several components. Click on the component designations to find out more information. All components of the high voltage battery unit are located in the housing. The cover with gasket is screwed on to the housing using self-tapping screws. There are a total of eight cell modules in the high voltage battery unit. Each cell module comprises 12 lithium ion battery cells, each of which have a voltage of 3.75 volts and a capacity of 60 amperes. Each cell module has its own cell supervision circuit which monitors the voltage and temperature of the cell module. The cell voltage of the individual cells is also adjusted by the cell supervision circuit and the information sent to the SME. The battery management electronics has several tasks to perform. It controls the startup and shutdown of the high voltage system, evaluates the measurement signals, controls the cooling system, determines the state of charge and the available power of the high voltage battery unit, identifies fault statuses and has monitoring functions. The safety box includes the switch contactors, sensors and the overcurrent protection. So that the weight of the high voltage battery unit and the resulting acceleration forces can be supported at the body, the high voltage battery unit is connected to the drive module using 26 screws. The high voltage battery unit is connected to the high voltage electrical system via the 2-pin high voltage connection. 
A contact is available for shielding around the two electrical contacts for the high voltage cables. In addition, the high voltage connection provides protection with its plastic casing against contact with live parts. Only when the cable is connected is the coating pushed away and the contact established. An electrical connection is established between the housing and the drive module by a potential compensation screw. This low resistance connection is a decisive prerequisite for the fault-free function of the automatic insulation monitoring. For this reason, attention must be paid that the correct tightening torque is applied for the potential compensation screw. Contact surfaces and tightening torque must be checked by a second person and then documented by the two individuals. The low voltage connection is the interface between the 12 volt vehicle electrical system and the battery management electronics, SME. This connection is the interface for the activation of the combined expansion and shutoff valve. The refrigerant lines are also connected here. The venting unit at the high voltage battery unit is, on the one hand, responsible for adjusting large pressure differences between the inside and outside of the high voltage battery. On the other hand, the arising condensate in the inside of the high voltage battery unit is transported outwards by the venting unit. The high voltage safety connector service disconnect is not a direct element of the high voltage battery unit. It is located below the engine compartment lid of the IO1 and using this connector for the high voltage system can be switched to a de-energized state and secured against restart. The high voltage battery unit is already cooled in the standard equipment by the heating and air conditioning system via a separate branch of the refrigerant circuit. If required, the combined expansion and shutoff valve is automatically activated. If in the IO1 the optional equipment seat heating for driver and front passenger is available and the vehicle is connected to the power supply system with the charging cable, the battery cells can be heated using the interior air temperature control function. An optimal temperature level is thereby established. The heating is affected using heating wires which touch the cell modules along the coolant ducts. These heating elements are supplied with current from the high voltage battery unit. Here you see the heating and cooling system of the high voltage battery unit. Hover your mouse over the components to find out more information. The, ref the refrigerant is reduced into a fluid state in the capacitor. Three refrigerant lines are installed in the standard equipment. A fourth line is used for the optional heat pump. Three, ref the heat exchanger is stored in the high voltage battery unit. With the optional equipment, seat heating for driver and front passenger, heating wires are secured at the heat exchanger. The nominal voltage of each lithium ion battery cell used in the high voltage battery unit is 3.75 volts. The nominal voltage of the high voltage battery unit with 96 cells is 360 volts. The storable energy is theoretically 21.6 kilowatt hours. In the table, you can see the technical data of the high voltage battery unit of the IO1. Mm. Do you know? Test your previous knowledge. Please select the correct answers and then click on Evaluate. High voltage battery and digital accessory insurance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, that blood clotting, I see. <laughs> Apart
Apart from the replacement of defective components, no repair work in the HV battery unit is allowed. For example, a faulty wiring harness cannot be repaired, but replaced with a new one. In order to carry out the replacement of faulty components, the repair instructions must be followed precisely. Also, the use of the special tools mentioned in the repair instructions must be observed. <laughs> Later on in this learning program, you will receive information on the replacement of the individual components of the high voltage battery unit. However, before the components are replaced, an electrical and mechanical diagnosis must be performed. Only after the procedures are completed and a subsequent request from the diagnosis system can the high voltage battery unit be removed. Before the high voltage battery unit is removed, the work bay must be prepared. More specifically, this means making available the special tools, securing the work bay with barrier tape, and observing the safety rules. A visual inspection for external damage is then performed. The high voltage battery unit is also checked for faults which prohibit a removal. Also faults which may prohibit a repair, for example an internal isolation fault, must be taken into consideration. In the diagnosis system, the test schedule and the corresponding repair measures are selected. If one or several cell modules are to be replaced, the state of charge of the intact cell modules must be determined beforehand. If all cell modules are replaced, alternatively, the voltage of a new cell module can be determined via the charger and used as a nominal voltage for all the other new cell modules. This way, the charging times are reduced to a minimum. The housing of the high voltage battery unit must be checked for dirt contamination and damage. This also includes the connections and venting unit when installed at the vehicle underbody. Damage to the diaphragm of the venting unit may indicate damaged cells or a leak in the heat exchanger. The removal of the high voltage battery unit is affected in several operations which are described in detail in the repair instructions. A brief summary is presented here. First, the refrigerant must be evacuated. Then the high voltage system must be switched to a de-energized state using the high voltage safety connector and secured against restart. The de-energized state is detected at the instrument cluster. Then the vehicle is lifted using a two-column vehicle hoist. This type of vehicle hoist is required in order to obtain sufficient clearance for the removal and installation of the high voltage battery unit. The unit connections at the high voltage battery unit are also removed. This also includes the high voltage and low voltage connectors as well as the refrigerant lines. For removing the refrigerant lines, safety goggles must be worn as there may still be residual pressure. Then seal the connections with plugs to protect against dirt contamination. Then a mobile lifting table, including all adapters, is positioned and secured at the high voltage battery unit. The mounting bolts at the drive module of the vehicle and the potential compensation screw are slackened. Now the high voltage battery unit is lowered from the vehicle. The housing of the high voltage battery unit is examined on all sides for dirt contamination and damage. The housing is also checked for thermal irregularities. This applies mainly to the faults which imply an unclear status of the high voltage battery unit. Some safety rules must be observed for handling and primarily when opening the high voltage battery unit. Click on the exclamation marks to find out more about the safety rules. After opening the housing cover, the high voltage battery unit must undergo a visual inspection for mechanical damage. 
before and after each operation, as well as during the execution of the repair work, a thorough inspection of the components and the working area is required. For example, during the removal of a component, other components which become loose as a result of the removal must be checked for damage. If the housing of internal high voltage components is damaged, please contact technical support. Work on the high voltage battery unit must be terminated immediately for safety reasons. Before working at the open high voltage battery unit, always disconnect the high voltage cable between modules 4 and 5 which is secured inside at the housing in order to interrupt the series connection. The work bay for the repair of the high voltage battery unit must be clean, dry and free of flying sparks. Therefore, avoid direct proximity to vehicle cleaning areas or work bays at which repair work to the body is performed. If necessary, use partition walls to separate areas. To secure the work bay against unauthorized access, as well as in the event of a lack of high voltage intrinsic safety, unclear status, barrier tape is required. It is recommended to position yellow cones with a lightning flash when the working area is left unattended. The use of tools or other objects with pointed or sharp blades or edges is not permitted. This includes, for example, screwdrivers, diagonal cutting pliers, knives, etc. Plastic wedges or blunt fitting aids made from plastic are allowed. Cable straps at high voltage cable cannot be cut. Either remove the clips or disassemble high voltage cable, including the support component. It is not possible for electrolyte to escape at the battery cells. The volume of fluid is absorbed in the poor material. The housing is also protected for the service life against corrosion and the cells are upright. In the event of undamaged cells, fluid can only escape at the terminals. However, this is not visible through the cell contact system and the cover for the service employees. Care should be taken to ensure that no tools are left in the inside of the high voltage battery unit. Before closing the housing cover, the tools in the toolkit should be checked for completeness. In the high voltage battery unit, lost or fallen small parts, such as screws, must be removed. To avoid losing screws during repair work in the high voltage battery unit, it is generally recommended to use magnetic tools. In the event of work interruptions, ensure that the old housing cover is attached and secured against unintentional opening by screwing in a few screws. Secure the working area using barrier tape. Due to the extremely flat design of the radiator, there is an increased risk of damage during disassembly and installation. Here, careful handling is imperative as the cooling of the cell modules is no longer guaranteed in the event of a damaged heat exchanger. Exercise the utmost caution when disconnecting and connecting the isolation monitoring cable and the battery management electronics, SME, as there is high voltage at the thin, orange-colored lines. Do not drag or pull at the lines. During connection, this must be locked securely, as otherwise the isolation monitoring cannot function fault-free. During work on the cell modules, ensure that the plastic lid of the modules does not become loose. The live cell contact system is located underneath. If the lid becomes loose and is not damaged, this can be secured again. If the lid is damaged and it is no longer possible to secure it properly, it must be replaced. Installation is no longer permitted. 
In, In this case, case please, please contact, contact technical support. Moisture residue and coarse dirt contamination in the cover area of the high voltage battery unit must be removed before disassembly. Gaskets and sealing surfaces, for example at the venting unit, high voltage connector, 12 volt vehicle electrical system connector or refrigerant connection must be cleaned before reassembly using a specified cleaning agent. In the event of dirt contamination in the high voltage battery unit, the affected areas must be cleaned carefully using the specified cleaning agent after clarification of the cause. The removal of all components which can be replaced is affected in a specified order. The cover is removed first. Please note that after the cover is opened, it must be replaced in order to guarantee the tightness of the high voltage battery unit. Then the high voltage connector between the cell modules 4 and 5, as well as the cell module to be replaced, are removed. Before the removal of the cell supervision circuits and the wiring harness, the serial numbers of all cell supervision circuits and cell modules must be noted in the position diagram. The position diagram can be printed out in the diagnosis system. Then the cell supervision circuits and wiring harnesses are removed in order to create space for the removal of the cell modules. During the replacement of the individual cell modules, the cell supervision circuit can remain at the cell module, only the high voltage connectors have to be removed. You will receive more information on this in the next chapter. Now the battery management of electronics, SME, is removed. The safety box is disconnected and also removed. Lastly, the heat exchanger is removed. This should always be carried out by two people in order to avoid damage due to its length and low stability. The components are installed in reverse order. Put the individual operations in the correct order by positioning the text boxes in the locations from top to bottom. Oh gosh, I can't borrow this bomb book now. Oh, During the replacement of a cell module, the cell modules must be numbered in order to re-establish the same installation position during reassembly. A corresponding position diagram can be printed out from the diagnosis system. The voltage of the cell modules must also be measured and noted so that the new cell module can be brought to the same voltage level. After the high voltage connector at the cell module and the high voltage connector at the cable secured to the housing have been disconnected, the nuts of the cell module can be slackened and the cell module, including cell supervision circuits, can be removed. Before the installation of the new cell module, its state of charge is brought to the level of the remaining cell modules. If all cell modules have to be replaced, Alternatively, the voltage of one cell module can be used as a nominal charging voltage for all other cell modules in order to minimize the charging times. The heat exchanger must also be replaced during the replacement of all cell modules. Then the cell supervision circuit from the removed cell module is attached at the new cell module. The serial number and the installation position of the new cell module are noted on the position diagram and later transferred to the diagnosis system. The components are then installed afterwards in reverse order. The following applies. Before the installation of a cell module, a heat conducting paste must be applied to the heat exchanger in order to guarantee a secure connection between the cell module and heat exchanger. 
for the replacement of all cell modules and the heat exchanger, it is not necessary to apply the heat conducting paste. Each time the housing cover is opened, it must be replaced. A new cover is therefore mounted and the end of service test performed. Following a successful end-of-service test, the high-voltage battery unit is installed in the vehicle. Then the serial numbers of the new cell modules must be entered in the SME control unit using the diagnosis system. Before the high-voltage battery unit is installed in the vehicle, the operability is checked using the end-of-service diagnosis system. The appropriate test adapter is connected at the venting unit, and the test connectors for the pressure connection, the high-voltage connector, and the interface for the 12-volt vehicle electrical system connector are connected. Then the overall test is started at the end-of-service diagnosis system. Here, the tightness, dielectric strength, isolation resistance and the SME isolation monitoring are checked. After the overall test, the fault memory is read and if there are no faults, a test code is issued. The test code must be noted for subsequent transfer to the diagnosis system. Then the transport bit is set in the high voltage battery unit by the end of service diagnosis system. After repair, the high voltage battery unit must be reinstalled in the vehicle with support from a second person. The O-rings at the refrigerant lines are replaced. The mounting bolts are attached. And the potential compensation screw is screwed in. As the potential compensation screw is critical for the function of the high voltage battery unit, the fitting must be checked by a second person and countersigned on the work's order. After the replacement of the components and reinstallation in the vehicle, a final electrical diagnosis is performed. The service function, startup of the high voltage battery unit, is used here. The result test code from the test of the testing device is imperative for the startup and is entered using the diagnosis system. Then the serial numbers of the replaced components and their installation position are transferred to the SME control unit. By resetting the transport bit, the switch contactors in the high voltage battery unit are released again. Then the fault memory is read. If there are no faults, the procedure must be completed and the data transferred to vehicle operation and service data transfer and analysis and documented. Then the high voltage battery unit must be charged fully. Special regulations must be observed for the storage and disposal of high voltage batteries. High voltage battery units and their components can only be stored in rooms with automatic sprinkler systems. Fire alarms must also be installed so that a possible fire can also be detected outside operating periods. In general, high voltage battery units cannot be stored on the floor, but only on shelves. Additional notes and measures apply for damaged high-voltage battery units. A high-voltage battery unit is considered damaged if it has visible scorch marks. The high-voltage battery unit is also considered damaged if there is extreme heat at individual areas, if there is smoke emerging from the high-voltage battery unit, or if the high-voltage battery unit has a deformed or torn outer skin. Damaged high voltage batteries must be stored temporarily outside for at least 48 hours at a specially designated location before being finally disposed of. The storage location must be at least 5 meters from buildings, vehicles or other combustible materials, for example waste containers.
High voltage, voltage battery, battery units, units with external damage must be stored in an acid-resistant acid and secure trough in order to prevent penetration of emerging electrolyte in the soil. An uncontrolled flow of water for firefighting must also be prevented. If a high voltage battery unit must be disposed of, the BMW service manager must contact the disposal company responsible for the respective market. If the disposal company is not known or if there are questions concerning the disposal, he contacts the respective environmental management expert. The BMW service manager must also ensure proper packaging and safety of the high voltage battery unit. In the event of non-defective batteries, the transport packaging for spare parts can be used. In the event of defective batteries with emerging fluid, special containers must be used and transported as hazardous material. If smoke emerges when checking the suitability for transport, 24 hours without smoke formation must be left before transportation can commence.